Hey guys, um, so today I'm going to be showing you around the Talk Showcase event platform. Um, so the very first time you log in, uh, you'll be met with a screen very similar to this. So the first thing you'll be asked to do is choose if you want to connect with your social media. If you choose to do this, uh, then all it will take is your name and profile picture. It won't share any personal information. Equally, you can just click straight through. Now you're being asked to complete your profile. So this is really important. One, so that when people land on your profile, they'll know who you are, what you do, what you're interested in. Um, but also it's, it allows our um, AI to work more effectively and make sure that you get the best recommendations that are designed for you and therefore have the best event experience possible. So I'm gonna go through here and if I want to update the job function, I can add extra parts here or I can equally remove anything that I don't think is relevant. I can select my business area, my area of interest, and the product categories that I'm providing. These questions may um, differ depending on what your ticket type is, but the general function of filling out your profile is exactly the same. Now you're gonna be asked um, about your contact detail sharing. So automatically, your contact details will be set uh, onto connections only. So you can choose whether you want them to be completely private, keep them on connections only, or have them public. If you select it connect, uh, connections only, it then means that only users who have a mutual interest with you or have an accepted meeting will be able to see your contact details. These can be updated later in the profile section where I'm going to show you too. Once you're happy, you just go ahead and click next. The final onboarding screen that you met with here is just asking you to agree to some data usage. Now, this isn't us, you know, sending your details anywhere or anything like that. This is purely so that our AI can get smarter over time and learn from the way you behave and other users behave to overall make the AI smarter. However, if you don't want to consent to this and you leave the toggle off, this won't by any means impact your event experience. Okay, so now we're met with the first screen. So the first thing I always recommend that users, that everyone should do, is go ahead and update their profile. So this is up here in the top right hand corner where it says profile. So you can upload a profile picture, update your name and your headline. Here you, is where you can change your contact details too. So your email address will automatically be the one that you're registered with. And this is where you can change your phone number. And again, you have complete control over the contact detail sharing functionality here. Here you can update the profile information again or add anything new. So job title, company, your location, and then the other fields here. And you also have the option to write a summary. Once you're happy, go ahead and click update profile. Now also on the profile section, there's one other aspect I want to draw your attention to, which is the manage my availability. You can go in and block out the days which you are or not available uh, at the beginning of each week to make sure that you only get meeting requests at times that work well for you. Okay, and that is the profile section. So now heading back to the main screen, I'm now gonna be moving on and talking about the networking functionality. So you'll see at the top here, we've got the recommended for you section. These are recommendations that are created just for you and they're based on your profile information and the profile information of others and the way that the AI believes that people will want the people you will want to see. So what you can do is you can go through here and you can show interest and you can skip on different users. You'll see if you always see a set of 10 here. When you move through the first set of 10, another set of 10 will be generated. However, the second set of 10 will not only take into account the profile information that is used for the matching, it will also take into account the behavior you just exhibited as you were going through the recommendations. So the more you use the recommendations and the more you engage with it, the smarter and the better your recommendations will become over time. So down here on the side, we can see anybody that I'm interested in, that I say show interest, will appear here in my interest list. Anybody that I skip on will appear here in my skip list. And I've also got interested in you. So anybody who has shown interest on me will appear up here. And I know that there's a new one that I'm yet to respond to because I see the number here. So I click through to this. So I can see here that Claire um, from Grip is interested in me. I've got a potential handshake. So say I'm interested in responding, I'm gonna go ahead and show interest back. This then creates a handshake or a connection. So a couple of things have just happened. You can see that Claire has appeared up here in my connections tab. 
Because we are now connected, it means that I can speak with her. I can choose to send her a message, hey, how are you? Um, and communicate with her that way and really open a dialogue. Equally, what I can do is go straight through to Claire's profile and I can request a meeting. So we can see here down the right hand side that I can request a meeting. So requesting a meeting, I can either have it uh, just myself and the invitee Claire, or equally I can add further participants. So say perhaps um, I'm speaking, I've after chatting with Claire, I think actually I'd like to um, invite my colleague Dan into this meeting as well. I can easily do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove him for this purpose though. So here we see the date and the times that are available and the meeting location here. You can also pop in a personal message. We really recommend adding a message when sending a meeting request, unless it's something you've already agreed to, because it really makes sure it increases the um, chance of being accepted by about 30%, adding that personal edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and click send here. Okay, now the meeting's been sent. I can also add further invitees if I still want to. And I can see here the status. So me as the organizer, I've obviously accepted, and Claire is yet to re respond. We can see here it's pending. If she declined it, then this would turn into a red X. I can see all my pending meetings by sitting here in my schedule. So here I can see that this is a waiting response. If it's been accepted, this will say in turn into a green accepted, or if it's declined, it will say red undeclined. If someone has requested a meeting of me and I'm yet to respond, this will be the same orange colour, but it will say pending because I'm the one that hasn't responded yet. Um, I can go ahead and reschedule the meeting or I can cancel it. So when the, when the meeting time was going to happen, there I would then be able to enter the virtual meeting and the virtual meeting room will open five minutes before the meeting time starts. So next down, uh, I'm gonna be talking about the event agenda. So down here on the left-hand side, we have the agenda. So here you can filter by day, you can also filter by track and location too. All the times will be shown in your local time zone. So from the agenda here, I can see this first session, so I can easily see who the speakers are. If there's a show more, it means that there are further speakers that aren't being shown on that initial tab. I can add the session to my personal calendar, so I can send it to my Google, Google Mail or Outlook if I wanted to, or equally, I can add the session to my schedule within the event platform, or I can do both if particular sessions I want to be in my event calendar, in my personal calendar. Now, when the session time starts, there'll be a little red button that will say live now, and what you do is you click into the session, and then the stream would appear here, and I would click watch. Okay, further down the right hand, the left hand side on the navigation items, we've got the different lists of people and users attending. So for example, here on sponsors, I can see all the lists of the, of the sponsor companies and I can click into any of their profiles and have a look at them if I want to. Equally, we've got the delegates and representatives and the pro this is where the profile information is again very important because you will be able to filter by your people will be able to filter by the profile information so if you don't want to use the recommendations and you want to go ahead and actually search for the kind of people you're looking to meet you can do that here then we also have speakers and products too so the final part I'm going to show you is the exhibitor portal. So if you're, if you're not an exhibitor, then this part won't be relevant to you. So enjoy the event.